Good evening, good afternoon, it's Chris Petrie. Welcome everybody. Hey, you know what? Um, I'm actually redoing my studio right now, so I'm actually um, going to try to um, do a couple more, um, I don't know, technique and, uh, you know, just simple ideas on some watercolor tips that I usually have. Um, maybe not so much doing some paintings. Uh, things are sort of uh, in disarray here, and I, I'm trying to um, get a... Uh, get a good handle on doing things here in the studio to try to reconfigure everything. So um, so for the next couple weeks we're just going to go in with some videos here on just good, helpful, straightforward um, ideas on watercolor, how I do things. Everyone's different. You're the artist. You do things differently, obviously. You have your uh, favorite things you like to, how you like to organize your uh, watercolors, your paints, your papers. Um, your workstation, all these different things, but what I'd like to do is just share the way I do things and if you find that um, you pick up a couple uh, interesting uh, tidbits from this, uh, great! Um, that's what I'm looking to do and then maybe after a couple weeks or so once I get my studio back in shape um, I'm going to be back in full swing doing uh, more paintings and all kinds of interesting things. So uh, here I just have uh, my palette. Um, you'll notice that if you type in uh, onto the YouTube search bar uh, my palette, Chris Petri, or Chris Petri, my palette. You'll notice that I have about three or four different um, videos on on uh, my my palette, how I organize my colors, um, why I've chosen the colors that I do, what different palettes that I use. Um, so there'll be a lot of interesting information there, and that kind of gives you an insight into how I um, organize my process of painting and drawing and painting and watercolor. So here, this is my real go-to palette. Um, this is a um, Holbein palette. This is readily available. You can pick this up in, you know, probably any um, major art retailer, any art website. Um, it's probably on Amazon. So this is a real great palette. I think it's the best one out there that I've that I found. I have a couple custom-made palettes um, from a private uh, manufacturers of uh, paint boxes and palettes, but those are, um, um, I don't use them as much as I do on video as I do these, because these are more readily available, so I'll use the ones here on these videos that are just readily available, easy to pick up. You can pick them up within a week or two, or even a couple days, if you want to, if you're just starting out and you're wanting to use the same equipment that I have. Uh, this is the second palette that I use, it's a Schminky. It's a mini palette. I did uh, custom organize it a little bit. I took a credit card and some, and I bought some larger um, um, <clears throat> paint uh, trays. So there's different. I did it a little differently as far as I customized this one a little bit, but. For the most part, these are credit card divisions here. I cut small pieces of really thin credit cards. Not like really credit cards, but almost like uh, identification cards. They're thinner than credit cards. And I trimmed them with a pair of scissors, and then I crazy glued them in to these larger pans. So I have two size pans here, the large pan and the small pans. And then on the top section here, I took the large, four large pans, and I divided them a little smaller with the uh, small identification card that I crazy glued in there so that I could uh, customize it. And I used double stick tape, heavy duty double stick tape in the bottom of this schminky um, palette to crazy glue, uh, to double stick tape down the uh, pans that I have in here, these plastic pans. So this is more of a customized uh, type thing, but you'll see the same colors here as I have in my larger uh, pan here. And this is, again, um, my palette. So uh, Chris Pe if you type in Chris Petrie, my palette, on YouTube, you'll see all the colors I use. I list them out, the names of the colors, the brands that I use, so forth, so on. 
but these are uh, you know kind of important especially if you're following me like um on a weekly basis or you know somewhat regularly and you want to know the colors i'm using they're all here and here and i use the same colors all the time so if you want those colors you can just again type in my palette chris petri also if you want a printed version of it you could just email me at chris petri uh, at att.net again uh, chris c-h-r-i-s petri p-e-t-r-i at att.net and then I can send you um, a uh, PDF copy of the um, palette all well, the colors listed out I, I typed out the um, hand printed out the colors the um, I hand printed out the colors as well as they're all listed out each section of what colors in each section of this palette so you'll see this palette on a printed version as well as all the colors I have in a listed uh, fashion with brands and all. Okay, so here again, this is my main palette. I like this a lot. I think this is great. You know, you can um, see that it's all laid out, warm and cool. Warm, cool, starts over here and goes this way. Specialty colors here, double stick tape with uh, pans. You can buy these online or in any art store. Plastic pans, you can take double stick tape and double stick tape these down into your palette. This is a great palette because if you paint larger paintings, you've got this huge area of mixing that you can do on this side of the palette. Or if you're doing average size paintings or smaller paintings, then you can, you know, you can just use this section here to mix colors and so forth. So this is a great overall palette. And Let's go to the next step here for organizing. I'm big on organizing as far as, you know, I'm working full time. I want to make sure that I'm not wasting time like scratching my head or searching around trying to find things. I want everything real simple and easy so that when I go to paint or draw, it's right there, foolproof, easy to manage. That's why I use these. Ziploc bags. All my two colors are organized in two bags. Warm, cool. Two Ziploc bags. All my regular cool colors are in this cool bag. All my warm colors are in this other Ziploc bag. These are my warm colors. Real simple. How simple can that be? All my colors, two colors, blizzard and crimson, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, you know, yellow ochre, burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw umber, all here in this bag. So whenever I'm looking at my palette and I know I need to refill a color, warm colors, grab that first. I start just pulling them out, fill them in, leave it to the side. Fill it in, leave it to the side, just keep going through until I have all of them filled the way I need them if, if we need to fill them. Some of them might not need to be replenished, no big deal. Then I say, oh, cool cool side of the palette, green, green and blue and purple and this side of the palette. No problem. All my cool colors right here in my other Ziploc bag. Perfect, look at that. I just open up the bag and I just start going right down the line. Now this is a great way to organize. Um, I've also seen people, um, they have different like, uh, maybe like a fishing tackle box or some people use plastic, um, plastic uh, um, tackle box trays. Those are great too. I have those. I use those sometimes too if I'm traveling. Um, keeps the paint safe too so the paints don't squish down and squeeze and, and uh, have a problem with that. So, but these, I use these most of the time. I even travel with these two. I just, you know, I'm just careful with them, but just two bags. And then for a surprise, we have our surprise colors. These are colors, hey, no big deal. We got colors that I don't use all the time, but definitely I use them occasionally, depending on the painting. So we have, uh, 
you know, custom colors, exotic colors, you know, and I put them in this bag here. And I also put my um, ivory black and Payne's gray in this bag because I don't really squeeze out all that much uh, ivory black and Payne's gray every day because I don't use those colors as much. But all the other colors I use a lot of that and I'm always needing to replenish those other colors. So this is my exotic, um, you know, occasional bag where I have occasional colors I use. I keep my whites in there too. I don't use white too much, but I have a couple of my white tubes in there too. And that's really how I organize my colors, my tube colors. So that's really handy. So whenever, even if I go out and do some plain air painting, I just grab all three bags, throw it in a duffel bag, and that's it. And um, that's really the um, way I organize my uh, paint tubes and my palette. And I also have a really cool, this is more for travel, I have See if I can zoom out a little. This is absolutely great for um, travel. If you're doing any kind of plain air painting, you can take pencils, brushes, everything right in here. So whatever kind of uh, brushes you have and so forth, you just, this is a great case. It's got a nice uh, strap, like that. Great for plain air, you just stow this inside of a uh, duffel bag. Great for on the go painting. Other than that, I keep my uh, brushes in a glass jar or two on the uh, table. So these are just tidbits of organizing that I do in the studio. I have um, a lot of interesting uh, gadgets and things, different brushes, you know. I might make a video eventually on different brushes that I have. I've accumulated like literally, you know, maybe 50 or 60 different style brushes at least or I've got probably, you know, or maybe like 10 or, tw you know, 20 different like styles. Like this is a um, Sumi ink brush. And you can see that this is really like quite a large brush. But this is great for inks. If you want to do like a really large ink painting, these are, um, Bill Buckman makes these. Um, he's a, uh, he does a lot of ink work. And uh, when I was painting and I first started my first like, probably five to ten years I got bored a lot I get bored very easy so this was different I went on different you know excursions to learn different kind of techniques with different you know art products and inks and pastels and so I've tried a lot of different art uh, mediums over over my time just to keep interested and not get bored with just watercolor so there's all kinds of cool stuff I have here um, along with these really cool, these, this is a, um, a bamboo, uh, ink pen. And it's real simple. It's just really dip it into an ink well. So you can fill up anything, uh, like a, a small, a small water color jug even like this works. Fill it with, you know, a little bit of ink in the bottom. Dip it in. And we can do ink drawings. These are great for ink drawings. And I think I'll do that too as well. I think I might make a couple videos on different um, mediums. I guess, you know, mixed media. But they, you know, mixed media is really, you know, watercolors, ink, wa ink and wash, um, you know, pastels. So I've, I've worked with a lot of different kind of things. I stick with my main with watercolor mostly. That's my favorite. So, but I figured I'd go over some of these things in the studio, how I organize things. So this is really nice. Again, the 
Holbein watercolor palette. The Schmincke Mini, you know, it's more of a, a small palette. Works great too. It's got the great thumb ring on the bottom, so it's very uh, comfortable to uh, work with. And uh, I also like to share with uh, everybody, I, I try to do this in my videos, with, with watercolors especially. I try to kind of emphasize the, um, let's see if I can get a, some clean water here, some clean water. So here I, I try to emphasize this when I, when I do my watercolors. Hopefully I convey this really well. When I'm doing watercolors, I will get a little pa some paper here. Okay, if we want a dark dark in our painting, we're going to have to either take our brush, rinse it. We're, o we're always rinsing our brush to clean off the colors and keep things looking fresh. So we take our brush. To get darker darks, we definitely have to dry off our brush a little bit with some tissue, or we can also use a sponge, check off some water on our sponge. And then we can go in and get our fresh squeeze tube paint. And if we see that our paint is not, if we don't have enough paint in our wells, like if it's getting to the point where it's sort of we can't get fresh paint, we definitely have to go in, get our bags, our nice organized bags, and say, all right, it's time for more paint. So I put my paint down and I find my blues here, French Ultramarine. Let's see if we have some here. Yes, we do. We have French Ultramarine here. So if you see your paints are running a little low and they're getting dry, you it's a really a key thing is keep a lot of fresh squeeze two paint in your palette. Now, see how we get some, that, that beautiful rich color. We can't get that. If we're just trying to use dry paint and there's no fresh squeezed paint in this palette, we can't get that nice dark tonal value. As we were talking about in previous uh, videos recently about tonal values, to get these dark tonal values we definitely have to have fresh squeezed two paint. so that's real important. So let's always remember that. Let's always keep our palette with fresh squeezed two paint. Now here's a great key thing to remember. If you're going to put your palette away for like a, I don't know, maybe like a, um, a week, maybe you're painting just on the weekends, all you have to do is keep a damp sponge in your palette, close your palette, and then we just uh, put it into a, a nice uh, uh, plastic bag. Let me see if I can find something. And voila, we have even a larger hefty Ziploc bag. We take our palette with a damp sponge. Could be a damp uh, paper towel with a little bit of dampness on there from, with some water. And we just take it and we roll over the uh, bag. And then we put this in the fridge. If you can put it in a refrigerator, it stays cool and the paints will stay nice and moist. Um, so that's a big help. 
and also if it's in the refrigerator it will not uh, tend to grow any mold. Sometimes I have mold issues with some of my paints. It's not a big deal if I have mold on my paints. I just uh, I'll take my palette out. I can't always keep it in the refrigerator. Sometimes uh, I leave my palette out. And if I have a little bit of mold, I have a little uh, chopstick here that I have. A chopstick that I used for uh, ink drawings. And I whittled away the, um, the points to make nice little points on this. And I take that and I just, if I have mold, I just pick take the mold off with a small chopstick, wipe it on a uh, paper towel, go around, lift off any mold that I see, and that's it. And I'm ready to paint again. And then I will add or fill in the, the paint wells if I need to with fresh paint. If we're, if, it's, uh, if we're running low on any of the paints or if the paint's not moist enough. But that's really all you have to do. So maybe a half an hour before we paint, we use a spritzer bottle. Holbein makes this too as well. We spritz the paint box all the way around onto all the colors. And we close it. We put it to the side for you know a half an hour and we're ready to paint. A half an hour later we open it up and it should be that the, pa the paints are actually activated a little bit. So the paints will be a little bit moist and then you would just need to add fresh squeeze paint as you, whatever colors you're going to use. You think you're going to use a lot of that you need darker tonal values of course. So sometimes not all colors you're going to have to squeeze out new, new paint. So that's something you get used to as you work and uh, paint. But usually a nice moist paper towel or sponge. Spritzer bottle. You can spritz it too before you put it away. Into a plastic bag. In the refrigerator if you can. And that's it. Maybe a rubber band around it. Or you can buy a smaller bag. This bag might be a little larger for this, but just another tidbit of ways to keep your palette looking looking good. Paint. Water buckets, I keep, I have a dozen or so. This way I always have water buckets. I wash them out in the sink downstairs in the slop sink. So I always have at least five or six on hand that are clean and cleaned out and ready to go. I leave these on the side and then every once in a while I'll take these downstairs and wash them up and I put them next to my, uh, work, my work table here in my studio. And I'm always, uh, I have uh, plenty of uh, extra buckets, paint paint buckets, collapsible paint buckets. They collapse down to small if you want. You can make them smaller. You can make them smaller. These are by Holbein too as well. Collapsible paint uh, paint bu uh, water buckets. So these are the things I use on a constant basis in my studio. I hope you enjoy this. I hope, uh, you know, if you have any questions, please leave comments um, in the comments section. If you need to um, uh, know anything more in detail of how I have my painting uh, set up here, my uh, studio set up. Um, but these are some key things that I really like to have uh, set up in my studio. Um, as far as my paints and my water buckets, always, you know, I always have boxes of tissue and boxes of, um, and rolls of paper towels nearby. Paper towels I use to clean the palette. Tissues are I use to take water off the brush. And those, those are the two main, uh, you know, blotting. If you want to blot your watercolor painting, if you want to blot, tissues work great to blot color off. So tissues are great for taking uh, water off the brush as well as quick fixes on your painting. Paper towels 
wipe down your um, your your palette whenever it's getting a little bit uh, too many colors mixed up on your palette. You just do a quick little spritz, and you take your paper towel, and we just wipe up the paint that you know the paints that might be getting mixed up and looking all kinds of muddy looking. We do a quick cleanup with the paper towel. And that's it, then we're back to a nice clean working surface for our palette. All right, everyone, happy painting, enjoy. We'll see you on the next video, bye-bye.